Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine, and you? Good. 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 Finally, I you can you can leave. You can go. You can go out. No problem. Yeah. I can go out. I can go everywhere. Hopefully, everything is okay and will be okay. Uh, I will. I will. Uh, let's say uh, introduce you with us, Tony Girona, uh, coach of Fran French Chart and uh, Serbian national team. For most of the people out of France, that is more important than 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 your club's duty. But let's say firstly. That is the, the the last news, latest news. Uh, you extended contract with uh, with the Shart for yes. uh, two more years. Uh, what are your expectations? What are your plans? And why why you decided like that? Okay, we already spoke before uh, before I uh, I left for uh, for Christmas with uh, with the Shart with the with the management. They told me already that they wanted to make like a like a, a little bit long term contract because uh, now uh, the the works for the new hall is that they already finally they start it's a long time that they were planning this new hall and they want in these two years just to build a team and to be sure that when when the hall will be ready the team should be in the first division and i hope that we'll make step by step every year we'll have a better classification at the end of the year Last year, they for the first time, Shart uh, stayed in the league. They were always they go to the first league and they go they drop down. So it was the first you know season season of stability. Yeah, it was a difficult season also because with this COVID situation, finally we finished in in March like uh, a lot a lot of them. And uh, for us, we I will say that was a really good season also because we arrived to the semi-final of the French Cup. It was the first ca the first time in the history we we arrived there also with uh, Montpellier, Nantes, and Paris Saint Germain. And uh, with the three pick club uh, from France, we 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 were there to play the semi-final. Unfortunately, finally we didn't play this semi this semi-final. And we finished in this tenth position. That okay was was not bad. I think that uh, also we had the chance in the last match that we lost at home with uh, one of the teams who was in the I think it was the thirteenth position. If not, we we should finish perhaps in be uh, in the seventh position. And uh, now uh, for me it's also important that uh, now I can start to build the team on the way that I want because I was the last the last one to arrive here. They built the team. They built all the players, and the last one was the coach. That means that I I was working with uh, with uh, one uh, team that wasn't the, uh, the players that I choose in this moment and now okay step by step we are doing the things that we want. So Sharp will make some base to make some uh, future progress to to come to become more serious team for the for the French position. Yeah? Exactly, this is the idea. This is the idea because with the new hall it means that now our hall is one of the smallest one here in France. It's one. 1300 no more there is a lot of people who uh, who can't come to to see any match because uh, all is always sold out i think that there are like nine 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 tickets for the other teams when they come to play against us if they are not using these nine tickets we can sell these nine tickets but as you can imagine this is nothing and with the new hall that will be like 3500 something like this okay more sponsors more vip area and you know how they how they work here in France, like in Germany, with this situation, and that means that the, when match uh, will be more incoming money, when the, this new hall will be ready, and for sure it, is, it means that uh, a better team to 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 keep the this perennity on the on the on the first league and to and to grow and why not in the future to to reach some European competition. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's speak a little bit about Serbia. You made a terrific job at the start. I think that you are also a little bit surprised how it was, how it was good. Even you are mastermind of everything. I, I, I don't think that you had such a, let's say, pink scenario like, like this in, in yeah. your head. I think that no one couldn't expect something like this, especially with the two matches against France. I have to say, and. Uh, from the beginning, when we start to work there in Pazova, that was unbelievable. The first thing to say thank you for all the people who has been working with us there, and to, they were really so so helpful for us. They prepared everything that was really easy just to focus on on our job. 
And, uh, but uh, even that on the beginning, uh, we saw, especially when also German players, they arrived to Pazlova, that we can make one step, that how the team has been working. We make a lot of videos, we record a lot of trainings, we make a lot of corrections. And, uh, you know, that every day we saw that the team was making this small step in front, small step in front, the ambience was really good. Uh, also, as I, as I told them, of course, I, I, I want to thank all the players because some of them, they didn't see their families from six months. They arrived to Serbia and after one day, they spent a lot of days there in Pazova without their families. But uh, they, uh, they did really an, uh, an amazing, an amazing job. And uh, of course, no one couldn't expect one uh, big result against France. But as I told you, every day we saw that the team was working really, really, really good. And, uh, and finally, okay, we did the surprise, uh, the first match. And I have to say that I, I'm prouder, perhaps, from the second one than from the first one. Because even that the second one, we didn't win. Uh, it was just one seven against six was the only moment that they were leading the match. But I think that in this second match, the team uh, really showed some character and something extra. And was uh, and was really really a nice a nice start. And after okay, last match against Greece, that big respect from them. One team who uh, they have a lot of players without any competition from long time. Okay, they showed in the first half that they are a team who are uh, really a fighters. That uh, means that when we will play in in uh, in Greece, uh, as they showed against Macedonia and against Iceland, it won't be an easy match. But finally, I think that in the second half we. Uh, we found our way, we have found our, our resources that was especially important against France, that was the defence. And with this strong defence, we built it was a little bit easier to play, to play in attack and finally we took this, this match. Then five from six, it's a really amazing, uh, amazing start. But now, OK, it's time to put both uh, the feet on the ground and to, to, to realise what we need. Now we play three f- matches from one qualification and if we want to prepare something that it looks like we have in front of us is the next Euro in 2022. I hope that uh, now it's, I will say, uh, we have a big chance to be there. We have to prepare everything to, to really make a good, a good tournament. I will ask you uh, after about, about, about some plans. But uh, uh, for me, the, the biggest impression was um, uh, motivation of the players. Uh, and uh, some of them, and mo- mo- most of them, told me that they they have never feel like this, like this in 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 the national team, and they are very happy and so on. Uh, so, what did you do to them? <laughs> uh, I think nothing. I think that was all the people, all the staff. Uh, uh, we just prepared uh, with uh, we detail everything that we have been uh, doing there. Uh, when we are preparing the trainings, the videos and everything, okay, uh, we, I did a lot of individual interviews also with the players to know a little more about, about them, about what they think, uh, about how they feel the national team. I think that this team spirit was really, really important. Uh, the players were happy to see that uh, there were some rules to, for the defense, for the attack. Every day they gave something extra on the trainings. And, you know, when you put all the good ingredients in, inside the uh, it's easier that it, it, uh, this good uh, ambience uh, finally uh, uh, show to all the players, show, to show to all the people on the way that we have been working is the, is the way that we want to, to continue to work in the future. And, uh, and that's all. Uh, without, without, the, without the attitude of the players, without their, their job, this is something that is impossible to, to do. And I have to thank them, especially for their effort and for the for the commitment that they showed from the first day until the last one. Yeah. Okay. Um, there were no full squad on, you know, there, there were uh, some players were missing and some important players were missing. Do you think that you will adapt them uh, easily to the to the current group in the, in the future and what I kind of plans do you have on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as I'm saying always, the, no one is more important than the team. Uh, I think that we showed that, uh, and not only us, uh, many teams, they are showing that when the team really, they have this spirit, it doesn't matter who is playing. Of course, mm-hmm. you need the best players to win against the best teams. It's clearly. 
I'm not so stupid to think like with uh, doesn't matter which uh, players we can take to national team and we will beat uh, Norway, Spain, Denmark or France again. <laughs> it's impossible. We need the best players. But uh, I have to say that the 19 players that have been working there in Passova, they are all of them really, they have a, a profile of uh, professional players. Of course, some of them, they have lack of, uh, of uh, still of this uh, confidence and this uh, also experience as international players. But we need to build this at the same time that we are using these perhaps more experimented players. We have to give the chance to these young players to take this, this, uh, this experience also. That means that every time you will now, uh, you are always waiting for what's happening with this COVID situation, you know, with the injuries of the players. That means that we need a, really a, a big list of players that we have 40 players and they must be ready, all of them, just to help us in any moment uh, with, with the national team. And this will be the best for us. That doesn't matter who is coming, the most important and the team spirit should be the same. And all the players can be work, must be working on the, on the same way. Yeah, maybe the, the best and the biggest role had uh, the guys who, who, has all, who had uh, already experience with the Spanish coaches. For example, this pair in, in, in defense, Abutovic and Marcinic, who worked together in, in, uh, in Vardar, or now Jordic and Kukic in attack. It was probably easier for you to work if they know, if they know the system. Of course, of course, this is something that, as a as a as a coach, uh, you have to take a look how the the players are working on their clubs, which experience they have, and it's easier when you have Marsa and Anilia that you explain them something and they remember how they have been working before in Bardar, and then it's easier. Everything can can uh, can arrive faster. You just now take a look at uh, Portugal when they are playing in the World Championship. When they are in trouble, they put the players that they play in Porto, seven against six. They are doing an amazing job there. And the national team is also using this, this possibility. And of course, this is, this is also good. Yesterday, Spain, if you saw, okay, the moment that was difficult, both the, the two brothers uh, from Kilche that they are playing, okay, Dani and, and Alex Dushebaev. And, you know, with them, it's, you, you can... I think that you need to take profit of this situation where the players are playing on their clubs to take a look on that and finally to use it on the, on the right moment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, perhaps we are probably already qualified for the, for the, for the Euro 2020. Yeah, of Almost. course I know. Almost. I have to say that. <laughs> yeah. We need four points to, to be the first one, but yes. uh, now ambitions are growing. And you are probably aware that now fans and, and media, they are, you know, waiting for, for something big. How do you think? I know that you will tell me both, both feet on the ground and, 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 and so on, but mm, tell me something more, <laughs> if you have. <laughs> something more is, okay, I'm the first guy, uh, the first one that I want to be ambitious. Okay, and why not to reach uh, the second round? But this should be the first uh, step in the next big uh, uh, event for us. Uh, if after something else comes, that will be uh, okay. We will be waiting like this to take it, of course. But uh, I think that the, the first step should be to be present in all the big tournaments in the second rounds, and that means in the next Euro. I hope that in the next World Championship. And uh, when you take this experience, after that, okay, we will see. It's also clear that if we are going to play this European Championship as a first from our group. Also, the draw, it's not, I will not say easy because there is not any easy match in the European Championship, but will be, you have more chances, okay, you have more opportunities to make something else. Because if you go as a second or as a third, for sure you will be in a group with a really strong, strong, strong teams. And yeah. then we, we have to use this. In some moments, for sure, we will need to be lucky. Uh, you know, uh, you need uh, to have this. Uh, to be lucky in some moments in, in our sport and in all the sports. But of course, for me, the most important is to, to, to keep the, the, this spirit that we showed uh, in the last, in the last uh, weeks, and especially to make a good plan in the, all this year that we have in 2021, to make the activities with the group, to play the friendlies that we have to play, to start to work with this B team, to give them the possibility to some young players to, to take more experience, to help, if we can, the Serbian clubs also to develop how they are working every day on their clubs. And, okay, 
Now, these good results, as I said, I hope that this will bring also some uh, positive energy to all the people in Serbia to work on the same way and, of course, to discuss, to speak and to meet all the coaches and, and to see what, what, we, what they need, what can we help them, how the Federation can help us and, and to make this program for, for all the year. Yeah, I know that you put already eye on, 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 on young players, not only for the B team, but also from the junior team. And one of them, let's say the most talented was, was with you, Stefan Dodic. But I, don't know, I know that you, you are following also some other young players. What do you think about there, about him and about other players' perspective and, and uh, talent? Yeah, for Stefan, I'm so happy for him uh, when he, uh, okay, uh, I saw some matches when he was playing with uh, Metalurk, of course. Uh, I was uh, following him in the European competition, especially when he played against uh, Toulouse, against the French team. Okay, it was easy to see. And uh, he remembered me a lot uh, to someone like uh, Joan Canellas when he was young. Okay, because he's someone who is not so fast, he's not uh, so uh, explosive. But he really he has a good talent to take the right decision in the right moment. Uh, he impressed us a lot at the beginning of the, of the camp, I have to say like this. This was the reason that he stayed with, with the group. He deserved to be with the group. But we cannot uh, burn out uh, this young player. We need to, uh, and, uh, and I spoke already with him, to tell him that, of course, this was the first time that he came with us. For sure, he will be in the future with the senior national team. But now he has to prove, he has to show to all the people in uh, on his own generation why he has been working with us. This is something that I learned many years in Barcelona. When you have one player who is working every day with a professional team, when he returns to his team, normally he's the second team, he has to prove why he was working with the senior team. And he has to be like an example for everything, for the mm -hmm. commitment, behavior, uh, role playing and everything. And I hope that this young generation with uh, Dodic, uh, Senic, uh, Mijatovic uh, and some of them, okay, they, they will make something really interesting. There is the players to do it. And uh, I hope that the Federation will support them. I'm sure that they will do it. And we will try to help them also to, to achieve the things that they, they can achieve, especially next summer when they will play the, the, uh, the championship, uh, the, the world championship in, in, in Hungary and in Slovenia, I think it's uh, both of them. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's speak a little bit about World Championship. Enough of Serbia for now. Uh, how do you see this World Championship? It's a specific moment and we have this extension from 24 to 32 teams. Do you like it and what do you think about everything? First, I think that it's an strange World Championship because uh, mostly of the teams, they arrive to play this World Championship uh, with one or two friendly matches, even without preparation. And then you saw that in the first week of competition, that there were a lot of mistakes, the teams were like loud, uh, they, they, they didn't play fast. But now, today and yesterday, okay, and two days ago also, so uh, Norway, Portugal, and yesterday Germany, Spain, you start to see how the teams are improving that every day they are going to play better. And I'm sure that now we will see really a, a really good matches. Okay. To go from 24 to 32 teams, uh, this can be good if the players have more time to rest. Because the problem is to play more matches. And also the problem is to, even that we need to make, uh, to promote our sport all around the world. Uh, sometimes when you see 46, uh, 20 or some scores like this, I think that for a world championship, it's, it's, it's not good. I think that uh, it's, it's normal that uh, to promote and to make uh, our sport more popular, you need to invest in some uh, young markets, but not only to convite them to come to the world championship. I think that the International Handball Federation must provide also the possibility in these uh, countries, give them more support, give them the possibility to play another kind of tournaments, more tournaments to get this experience. Because finally, if they, if they play more handball in all around the world, it would be better, better for all of us. And for the performance of the, of the teams, as I told you, I think that we will need some days more. Or now, in these last uh, 10 days, we will really see the level of the, of the teams. Because, okay, I can speak just about the Spain. I saw mm -hmm. Spain at the beginning and they didn't play really a nice handball. I think they, were, they didn't found a way to, to, just to play. 
And yesterday, the match against Germany was completely different. And I'm sure that now we will see uh, another, another team. Yeah, they, they didn't play good, but maybe they had a tough group because that was maybe the toughest group. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree, it was the toughest because some of the groups were easy. They, they have just one match to take rest. And when you play against Tunisia and against Poland and Brazil, uh, you cannot take rest in, in, any, in any moment. But if we take a look how Spain was playing in the last Euro and how they, are, they were playing in the first round, okay, it was not the same team. But as I told you, this is also normal. You know that uh, they had just two friendlies to play, one against uh, two, uh, sorry, two uh, friendlies against, uh, against Croatia, and one of them was, was cancelled. Because the team who was playing in Doha and the team who was playing in Russia, there are few players that they are now playing there in the World Championship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Spain, uh, they, they, they can't imagine uh, their game without uh, entreries. Even he is for uh, Yes, I think that Raul is... Every is, that time. Problem? is that a problem for Spanish handball? We don't see a lot of young stars, fresh energy. Okay, uh, fresh energy. I think that yesterday, uh, uh, Dani Dushevaev, he showed something else uh, much better than he was before. Uh, I think he, he did one step in front. Uh, there are some young players, I think that they... Uh, Jordi, they, he did uh, an amazing job and in the last uh, three years already, this Spanish B team is playing a lot of international tournaments. And there are some uh, young players that, yeah, like Ian Tarrafeta or John Azque or Marc Añellas or some of them, that they already play some, uh, some uh, tournaments like this. And of course, but uh, to, to make, uh, the, to change one player like Raul Rios, this is, this is not easy. This is an amazing player every day that he's giving us like a master class how to drive the team, how to take the decisions in every moment. It's really a pleasure to, to see how, how he's playing. And of course, the transition won't be easy, but I hope, I hope, and I'm sure that there are some young, talented players that in, in the next Euro, if Raul decides to stop this year, in the next Euro, we will see some of the players and I'm sure that they will make a good job. Yeah. You probably see some, you saw probably some other matches. Yeah. What is your biggest impression? Some players, some teams, some, some, some process, some tactical, I don't know, solution? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think that uh, Portugal is still uh, making the steps that uh, they deserve. They, you can see when they are playing like a group, like a team, that they are really also playing with a huge passion. And it's, it's really nice to see. Uh, I think that Hungarian national team I don't know if in this World Championship, but in the next ones, in the future, they have a, a lot of talented players, huge, big, big, big players. Uh, all of them, they are making also a nice job in the last years in their clubs. They are taking more and more and more experience. And for me, Egypt is not a surprise. Okay, I suffered them when we lost the last, uh, the last final of the African Championship. I think that also in the last two, three years, they are developing, they are making a nice, good steps. And they are showing the potential that, that they have, okay? And uh, all the other teams, I think, that they are teams that we, can, we already know, like, uh, like Norway, like Denmark, uh, even France, that many people thought that they, are, uh, they will do nothing. I'm sure, look, they are almost, almost on the, semi, on the quarterfinal already. They need to win today against Iceland and they will be on the, on the, on the quarterfinals. And, uh, okay, it's a pity that some really good uh, players, they didn't come, like uh, Palmarsson is not here. I, perhaps you have more information than me, and I heard that perhaps Sindrich will come back to play. To play yeah, he mentioned Spanish. something. Yeah, he mentioned something. We will see. Okay. We will see. Sorry, sorry. And, uh, German team, even that a lot of uh, superstar players, they didn't come. Uh, they still have some talented players and it was nice to see how they work and they played yesterday against, uh, against Spain. Then, as I yeah. told you, I think that it's, uh, there, there are a lot of nice matches to see and, and to follow uh, every, every single day. For Germany, I, I would say that uh, Gislason was, uh, let's say, uh, treated by his own club, Kiel, because with Winchek and Peckler, this would be completely the same, the, the another yeah. story. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and Weinhold. And Weinhold, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, uh, could be something really, really, uh, really, uh, really different. But okay, they are showing that there are also some young players ready to take the, to take the place. 
and uh, okay now it's at, even that I have training normally morning in the afternoon I don't have a lot of time but at least a couple of matches every day I'm trying to follow them yeah D can you read this last comment maybe Volinte uh, yeah you know what is that what that means uh, we love you is this Tony I love you yeah Tony Tony we love you yeah okay that's good that some comment on some fan from Serbia I don't know who is yeah not... I hope I hope that when we will start to lose some matches they will say the same Okay, it's, it's moment to keep these comments because you know when yeah. there's something. Let uh, make screenshot, yeah. <laughs> exactly, I have to make this a screenshot and to and to show them after. Yes. <laughs> yeah, great, great, great. Okay, uh, tell me something. Okay, you mentioned Egypt. Uh, my prediction was that Egypt can win can win even a medal with the with the fans on the on the on the on the stands. Now it's a little bit difficult in this empty space, but Egypt is one country which is growing and they now made infrastructure amazingly for this championship they will they they will have their own hall and they have fantastic uh younger generation what is the difference between egypt and tunisia can you tell us you you know exactly what is it i think that the big difference is that in egypt okay uh, all the all the teams are based in cairo mostly Uh, mostly of them, and that means that they gave the possibility to the national team to work from uh, at least one year and a half ago, all the weeks at least two or three days together. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in some moment, Qatar was doing also, and this is also uh, is a big help. Okay, for a coach when you have all the players every week, because there are I think four players from uh, Egyptian team that they are playing abroad. They're playing uh, outside of the country. All of them, uh, the others, are playing on the country. And then uh, you, uh, this helped you a lot to make this, this step and to build a team really like, like you want to build it. For Tunisia, I have to say that I saw the matches that they play. I, I saw a couple of matches and was they play really good. And uh, was also good to see because nowadays, the, I will say that the, from the seven players that they play from the beginning, There is only one who was playing, who was playing, who is playing outside. Is the pivot Jihad Zabala, and perhaps Anwar Anwar Ben Abdallah. But all the other Mosbah Sanai, the left wing, uh, Darmul as a playmaker, uh, Aysam as a as a right wing. Uh, all the others are playing in in Tunisia, and then you see that in attack they they it was a little bit uh, they play really good because uh, they know each other much better. I know that also they used that the the Tunisian uh, competition was stopped. And that means in September, October, and November, national team spent every week five days together. And yeah. then, of course, this can help you. This can help you always. But don't forget also the result of the Egyptian national team in youth categories. Yeah, they took the gold medal and they took the, the bronze medal also with the juniors. And that means that it's not only what they are doing with the senior team. That means that there is some strategy behind, and there is some. Uh, Good job from Federation that providing all the people the possibility to to work on the way that uh, that they are working. They have three backline players who can be world class: Kada, Yahia, and this Eldera. So exactly. and Delari, and, exactly. and some of the youngs coming from behind and pushing and uh, and working on the really on the on the right on the right way. Yeah, it was funny. You you know that better. Uh, it was funny to see this Algeria Morocco fight, and this uh, Morocco Moroccan uh, coach who was crying after it. From the European point of view, it was funny, but I know that it was a I don't know war of of. It's much more than handball. It was in the in that in that match in that moment between for, these two. For people. you, you you must imagine one match like I will say uh, Serbia and Croatia. And Croatia took a lot of medals in the last years, in the last yeah. 15 years. Serbia just won the, in 2012. And then you had the possibility that you are leading by seven, by six, by five, by four, by three, by two, by one draw. And the last moment you lose the match. This, is, this, this was the same situation. Uh, Algeria with uh, Tunisia and Egypt uh, were the three teams from uh, African, African teams that normally they used to play the World Championship. I think that from Morocco it was the second one, or they didn't play a lot, yeah. because before for the African Championship were only three teams, 
had the right to play in the world championship but normally Algeria was, was always the third one yeah. exactly Algeria and, uh, and and Tunisia and Egypt were the the three teams and sometimes I think Morocco he played some one or two times yeah, we will check now uh, but okay <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like this, but and and and, and I, can, I know the, the this coach because this coach speaks Spanish. I remember because when we play against Morocco in the last uh, African Championship, and yeah. he was speaking Spanish with me, and he is so passionate, you know. And and I can imagine how he felt at this moment that uh, uh, you play almost a perfect fifty-five uh, minutes, and in the last five minutes, uh, some stupid mistakes that they did, and finally it was was not so nice to see uh, Morocco against Iceland these red cards i think they were too aggressive mm -hmm. this is something that is but it's it's not because they want to hurt someone because this is the, the level of the competition that they have in the local championships and yeah. the people must know that it's not because the moroccan they want to kill the icelandic players no 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 this is all. if you see one match of the of the moroccan Mar and league you will see this kind of contacts and the referees are just whistling perhaps two minutes or something like this. And this yeah. is the problem. For this, I am saying that for the International Federation, it's good to, go to invite these teams to play there, but they need also to support them, to give them the possibility to improve on their local, local championship. Because when the local championships will improve, the result will be always a better national team. Of course. Okay, Morocco played uh, for the last time in 2007. Okay. So, then. 14 years. So it's, it was really a historical event for them. Exactly. Yes. And they have this good goalkeeper from Limoges. This yeah. In yeah. Here in the, in the French League, this, in the first, this first part of the championship, he, he was the best one in the in number of saves. It's, it's, it's a little bit strange because his team... Uh, was if not the worst almost the worst one on defense they took much much more goals than no one mm -hmm. but he was the best one as a goalkeeper that means that they are playing fast they play with a lot of possessions and they also have this uh, guy you know that he's uh, scoring it doesn't matter against us he scored 14 or 15 from 16 it was amazing okay he's, yeah. a, he's a super player but uh this is really making a really really nice job with uh, with the club here in france yeah okay uh, I know that you, you, you know these guys even before the championship, but who, who are for you um, the biggest star or the, or the upcoming stars uh, which, you, which you see now or which other people see in, uh, in Egypt? We spoke about Kosoroto, for example, mm -hmm. but maybe you can mention some other guys who do you like to see. Uh, okay, there are some of them that we already know them. I think that Mikel Martins, the uh, playmaker from Portugal, is an amazing guy also. It's uh, unbelievable. Andre Gomez is uh, it's like an animal physically. Okay, uh, from uh, Germany, uh, Juri Nord, who was playing in Barca B a couple of years, was is also someone that I'm sure that in the future he, a lot of people will speak about, about him. As we said, uh, Kosorotov uh, already... Two years ago, I saw him. I tried to bring him to to Shard, but I know that uh, Xavi Sabate made the step mm -hmm. in front of us. Then he took from Plog, where he will play in the mm -hmm. in the next in the next seasons. And I have to say, also, I'm glad to see Amin Darmul, uh, one guy who I bring to the. He played an amazing uh, World Championship, uh, Junior World Championship in Spain, 2019. And I think that this after this World Championship, I hope that he will make this step and he will go to play in some clubs in Europe because. He's a really, really talented player and he can be really... And it's, it's nice to, to see how on the way that he's playing. And of course, as you said, there are some players that they don't need no one to, to speak about, like uh, Sander Sargosen. It's amazing how he plays. Or Sullivan is a player that I, I like a lot on the way that he plays. And the uh, stars that you spoke already about uh, from, from Egypt. Yeah. Okay. Um... What do you just, see? As just, I want to say hi to Lucas Vizay that I saw. Ah, yeah, hi, Luca, and hi also to Pau, he's my nephew. Okay, hi, Pau. <laughs> That's uh, great. Uh, how do you see the conclusion of this tournament? I know that prediction is something what is not in, you know, what is not popular, but how do you see? What do you, what do you think? Who will progress? Who will not? Now we, we see that Germany is almost out of the, of the, of the, of the quarterfinal. We see that Norway. They don't have destiny in their own head, uh, hands because France and Portugal will decide about it. And this group, where is Egypt, Sweden, 
Croatia, Slovenia, how do you see this maybe? Okay, I, I think uh, for Norway it will be difficult, but I hope that Norway will be in the, in the quarterfinals because I like on the way that they are playing and even that they make... Uh, I think that uh, France was using the, the positive energy or the negative, sorry, the negative energy yeah. that they took in our two matches. They transformed this negative energy to positive energy yeah. to play against them because they play really, really, really good. Uh, I'm glad to see on the way that Spain uh, played yesterday. I'm sure that now uh, that they, when they took the confidence again, it will be a most, most, most dangerous team. I have to say that still now I didn't see Croatia playing. I, I was not lucky. I didn't see, and I'm glad to see like uh, some nice guy like Len Solberg, the, the work that he's doing with the Swedish team. Okay, mm -hmm. and they are playing. Uh, they are playing good. And I hope that also they will reach the quarterfinals without any problem. And, you know, when you play after in these quarterfinals, it's just one match. And in one match, uh, a, lot, a lot of things can, can happen. But I hope that in the, in the semifinals, uh, now, sorry, in these quarterfinals already, we will see, we will see uh, uh, some better matches that we saw in the first week. And I'm sure that, as we said, that on the way that the teams are playing now, it was like the, the warm-up. We would say like the first week was like the warm-up. And now... We are looking really the the world championship. Yeah, great, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will let you now to go to the to some other obligation. I, I I think that you are mixing these training sessions and preparing team for the for the second part of the championship with exactly preparing the with... team for second round, preparing the team also for next year. Uh, also looking some videos from some Serbian players, uh, discussing with the staff, making improvements. Okay. It's nice to be uh, to be busy like this. Uh, also, even that this uh, COVID uh, situation, I hope that we will recover our supporters as soon as possible because it's really sad to see the holds empty. Uh, it's not the same sport. Uh, we are like uh, uh, making some events just to to give some positive energy to the people, even that now they have to take a look just from from the screens. That it's good to to know that they are already there. But I hope that in few weeks or in few months we will recover the supporters in the halls and we will we will come back to our we'll say this normality to play with with the with the people. Great. Okay. Thank you very much and see you in a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for sure. Thank you so much, Jika. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you to all the people. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.